character. God is good and all the time you know this is not a slogan our God is good those who are in person you are welcome and those who are online you are welcome this is all nations full gospel church Windsor if this is your first time just leave a line in the, in the chat line for us and then as we stand, we want to acknowledge God because for everything that He's doing in our midst, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, talk to God. Father, we thank you because we know you are here. And as we are gathered, we are gathered we are in your name. Father, come, take absolute control. The beginning, the end of our services in your mighty hands. And you know that you are going to move us to the next level. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We are going to take two hymns. The first one is Blessed Be.
your blood has covered my sins. I believe, I believe it. I believe, yeah. And my shame you've taken away. And my pain is sealed in your name. Sing it out. I'll raise the banner. I'll raise the banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer. My Redeemer.
Send your fire again. Send your fire again. The Holy Ghost. Send your fire. The Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Send your fire again.
You are the Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that you are the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, there is nothing we can do but through you, Lord. You have strengthened us. You have given us life. You poured a joy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you shine on us. You've given us hope, Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, everywhere we are, you are. You are the Lord. That will ensure the wellness of your children. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we pray, we pray that this evening will be a special evening in your presence, Lord. Father, we pray that the breakthroughs that we are expecting, we will receive in the name of Jesus. The healings we will receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we depend on you. We depend on you, the creator. We depend on you, the father of the fatherless. We depend on you because you have brought a change. You pour your peace upon the earth. Your love displayed. We thank you, the Holy One. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you. We glorify you. Come, take absolute control of our service this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And the children of God will say, hallelujah. Don't sit. Wave to somebody. Wave to somebody. Wave to somebody. Thank you, choir. Thank you, the musicians. And we'll hear the announcements. We are so glad to be with you in this today. We know this is not the same day we hear it every year in our church. Please join us at Wednesday, Monday at 10 a.m. and at Thursday at 6 p.m. Next is Bible study at 7 p.m. And every other Friday, we have prayer night starting at 9 p.m. We would love to connect with you if you're new to All Nations Full Gospel Church, Windsor. Simply scan the barcode on the screen, fill out your information so that we can connect you to the great people, events, and ministries here. We are so glad you came to worship with us today. This is All Nation for Gospel Church, Windsor, and we are House of Prayer. Please join our services Sunday at 10 a.m., Connect services at 6 p.m., Wednesday Bible study at 7 p.m., and every other Friday we have prayer night starting at 9 p.m. We would love to connect with you if you're new to All Nations Full Gospel Church, Windsor. Simply scan the barcode on the screen, fill out your information, so that we can connect you to the great people, events, and ministries here.
At All Nations Full Gospel Church, we love God, love the Bible, love prayer, love people, and we love to make disciples. And the best way to get started is by joining small Bible study groups. We have many groups. Simply scan the barcode to see which one is closest to your home to join. And if you need any encouragement or support, please feel free to contact our pastors. We will leave their numbers for you on the screen. And if you go to our website, you will find all the information you need to contact our church. We're praying every Monday to Saturday from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on our WebEx app. You can find the link through our social media or you can ask one of our leaders. Please, feel free to join us as you start your day with God. Thank you for faithfully giving your offerings and tithes to All Nations for Gospel Church Windsor. There are three ways to give. The Push Pay app, where all you need to do is text ANFGC Windsor to 77977 and follow the instructions that follow. If you prefer Interact, you can send it to dmensa at anfgc.org where it'll go straight to the church account. To give with cash or a check, please use the envelope that the usher would provide. If you need more information, visit anfgcwindsor.org. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the service. God, God bless, bless you. you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, it is important to wake up in the morning, early in the morning, 6 a.m., and have a devotion and that is how we build our relationship with God. Amen? So our prayer morning prayers continues from Monday to Saturday and is 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Join and also invite somebody to join. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, as we are going on, you know, all nations, we are a busy church. Amen. So, the Children's Day is coming. Anida Day is coming. And there is something that is beautiful, beautiful coming in July. In July, the singles, we are going to meet our future spouses. Hallelujah. Are there singles in the house? Only one voice. Only one voice. Only one voice. Are there singles? So let us prepare in July. Amen. Our senior pastor is putting up. You know, here we are going to connect. Amen. We are going to connect. This evening, are you ready? For the Bible studies, are we looking for that word, that powerful word coming from our own and own Reverend Yao? Let us clap and welcome him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. It's so beautiful. Can I ask for us a favor from you? If you all can move to the front row. Let's fill the front few rows so that I can look straight into your eyes and speak to you this evening. Don't stay at the back. Please come forward. As they are coming, let's clap for them. Oh, come on. Somebody put your hand together as you walk forward. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some are still scared of this territory. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. We, we are blessed to be in his presence and... Uh, we're going to have a very beautiful time, Amen. Amen. a very beautiful time with him. So we, let us bow our heads and speak to God, ask him to minister to you, ask him to speak to you this evening. I know his presence is here and therefore ask him to be so close to you and, and let you hear what you need to hear because you know that he's a God that loves you. Let him shower his love unto you. Somebody speak with him. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we've gathered once again to learn at your feet. The teacher we have, his name is called God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus, 
you promised and assured us that you will teach us all things, lead us into all truth. We are here for him to teach us and for him to lead us into the truths we need to be led into. Help us, Spirit of the living God, and bless this gathering with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So praise God once again. Um, so glad to, to be here to, to be able to share the word with you. Sunday, we have Palm Sunday. And, and we, we want to really come, bring our friends, invite our friends, and let us have a wonderful time with the Lord. Today, I want us to study the subject, meditating in the word of God, I think part three. But I would say this is part four, because the part one was rendered to us by our senior pastor at the leaders' retreat. Then we have done part two, three, and this should be part four. And therefore, the topic we're looking at today is the other benefits of meditation. Because we have studied over the last two, and even from our senior part, the first three, that when you meditate, your mind will be renewed. And while your mind is being renewed, and the Spirit of God will use the Word of God to generate what we call revelation. And so meditation will bring us to the place where our minds will be renewed and then we will, catch a uh, we will catch a revelation. And revelation is life transforming understanding. So this very exercise that we've been encouraged to engage in is mind renewing and life transforming. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can be the same if you would join this wonderful thing, exercise. It's very, very good. And... Uh, so that's what we are here for. Our main text has been Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I read, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? The will of God for you is good, is acceptable, and is perfect. Anything that is not good, acceptable, and perfect is not from God. But sometimes because our minds have not been are conforming to the standards of the world, we tend even to embrace those things. But when we meditate in the word of God, not just reading it, and not just studying it, but meditating on it, you, you understand. Then it can bring us to that place where our minds will be renovated. Our minds will be upgraded. <laughs> Far above the standard of the world. So that we don't conform to the things of the world. But now we'll be transformed from it. And that is where the, 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 your mind is renewed, which is mind. And then for your life to be transformed, the word that has gone into your heart begins to transform your life. And it's very, very important. If you want to live the Christian life, don't. this is something you do every day. So today we want to use Psalm 1. The verses 2 and 3. But if we can start from the verse 1, that would be good. The verse 1 tells us what Christians don't do. Children of God should not do. And then the verse 2 tells us what children of God should do. Every day, every night. And then the verse 3 tells us the benefits, the blessings that will come if we do. What we should do and we don't do what we should not do. If we don't do what we should not do, but do what we should do, then what God has promised us will be our portion. It's just that is the Christian life. He's not withholding anything that is so good from us. We shouldn't behave like Adam and Eve. Everything you can eat, everything you can enjoy, this one thing, I don't want you to touch. He said that is what we will touch. If we know that story and still do things we should not do and refuse to do things we should do, then we have a problem. It's not the devil, it's us. 
Somebody says it's me. You, 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 you get in it. But sometimes we tend to blame the devil easily. Don't do this, but do this. You say, no, I will do what you say I shouldn't do. That's how I used to live my life. I, was, I, I couldn't conform to wisdom. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. So it's very, very important. So I'm going to, we're going to read, I'm going to read Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. If, you, if, you, if it's on the screen, you can join me. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 1, not the NLT, uh, New King James Version, please. If I want any other translation, I will tell you. New King James. So, okay, can we read this? So, let's rise up. Let's rise up. You've been at work. You've worked so hard. So, in the name of Jesus, let us go. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. This is what we should not do. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he, 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 he meditates how? Day and night. And then what will happen to that man? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. No, 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 you didn't read it. It says some of the things you do shall prosper. No, what, what, what is God telling us? Whatever. What is another word for whatever? Everything. Please have your seat. Shout hallelujah. This is God's word for us. So no, notice something here. The Holy Spirit is telling us, or he's not telling us that you will be a tree. So if that is how you understand it, then that is why maybe you are not meditating. <laughs> because you will be a tree. How can I be a tree and a branch grows here and all that? He's not saying that you will be a tree. But he said, you will be like a tree. As a tree will struggle to thrive, if not planted or positioned by the river channels, so a man will not, a man when he is not positioned in his proper habitat will struggle. So a Christian, he might have all the scripture in his head, but not in his heart, will struggle if he's not positioned where he's supposed to be. Do you agree with me? The ability of a tree. To be fruitful it depends upon the quality of the tree from its root to the, the, the topmost branch or leaf. Why? Because the root will pull out the nutrients, come through the phloem to the, the branches, to the leaf. The leaf will cook the food through photosynthesis and now it goes down to feed the tree and then the, fruit, the tree will flourish. Do you have roots enough in the soil of the kingdom? Roots that can find the word. And, and how can your roots find the word so that it will bring the nutrients that will cause you to grow? You could have been in, 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 in Christianity for decades. But if you don't understand this principle, you, you'll be stunted. In fact, you'll be suffering from kwashioko. The health of a tree is most, most often determined by, by the health of its leaves. That's why you see that its leaves are not wither. I will explain this thing, uh, uh, that, that statement very soon. Because it's the leaf that catches the sun and it cools, you, you understand? And then the tree now receives food and eat. Who here has not eaten for one year? Who here has not eaten for one month? Who here has not eaten for one week? You oh, see? Who here has not eaten for one day? He said, nobody is fasting even to, okay, we, we, some people were fasting too. You see how the whole thing is? You need to eat. Some people live to eat and others eat to live. I don't know which one you belong to. But whichever, eat. And eat the right food. You, you, you get in the picture. You see, the lot of the saints of God are likened to trees. And trees in their right habitat. Trees that are positioned where they're supposed to be. Every Christian. The New Old Testament in Numbers chapter 24, verses 5 and 6, says that how lovely 
are your tents. How lovely is your church, all nation full gospel church. How lovely are the people of Windsor. You understand? Oh, Jacob, your dwelling, oh, Israel. He's talking about us. Like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside. Like alloys planted by the, by the Lord, like cedar besides the waters. And then if they are planted beside the waters, then they become so lovely. Have you, will you buy roses that have swiveled? No, you want that have blossomed. And you can't get a, 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 a good rose from a bad rose plant. And some of us want good things out of us. But we are not planted where we can produce that, that, those good things. Do you know there is a statement that the biological evidence of, of, of life is the ability to reproduce? So some of us, the life of Christ sometimes is lacking in us. And therefore, we are not able to produce what people will run after. Because, oh, how lovely. Go to the verse 5 again. It's so lovely that people will rush in to try and get, you understand? They want to come into your tents. They want to come into your dwellings. They want to be there. They want to be, be with us in this church. You might not have witnessed to them, but we are so lovely. It's a spiritual attraction that happens to Christians who understand what God is doing for them and with them. How lovely. May God, wherever you are, if he needs to transplant you, may he transplant you into the valleys. May he move you to the riversides. May he bring you beside the waters. And you will thrive. Your Christianity will be attractive. Some of us, our Christianity is not attractive. That's how my Christianity used to be. So instead of me attracting people into the church, I chase people away. Because they come and meet me in church. What? This guy is in this church? What? And what do you think they will do next? They won't come back. But now I believe my Christianity is attractive. Is that not so? And I believe yours is also attractive. That is it. And it just doesn't happen. You need to be where you ought to be. And you need to be one who doesn't do what you shouldn't do. But one who does what you are supposed to do. And God will bless you and bless you. It will shock you. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. I'm just trying to lay a foundation. The saint is likened to trees in their right habitat. Matthew 12, 33. He says something, either make the tree good and its fruit good. Or else make the tree bad and its fruit what? Bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. And... Some cannot even bear the fruit. And I know everyone here can bear the fruit. But there are some they cannot bear the fruit because of the condition in which they are planted. If you are like a tree. You understand. But what this message is to ensure that the tree that you are like will be a good tree. So that you will bear good fruit. Can someone say hallelujah? hallelujah. And... He's talking about rivers and waters here. There's, there is a, a theme that runs through the scriptures, the Bible. And it's called spiritual rivers. What we are talking about, you realize you are not a tree, but we are talking about your spiritual life. And therefore, if you go and sit by uh, the, the Detroit River here, and you want to jump in, you will die for nothing. And no one can plant you by Detroit River as you are, and you bear any fruit. So we're talking about spiritual rivers. I want to establish this truth also. You, you understand? And these are the spiritual rivers we should look for. Our spirits are longing for it like the deer panthers after the water brooks. But sometimes we don't know where these rivers are. If not this time, maybe as we go on. I wanted to end this today so that we can move into the Easter uh, 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 festivities. You understand? Spiritual rivers. Someone talks about it. You must be planted by the rivers of water or the channels of water. Then we go to Psalm 36. Let's read verses 8 and 7. I think I gave you only 8, but let's start from the 7 so that we will understand. Spiritual rivers. How do I find these rivers to be planted by them? You understand? He said, how precious, precious 
is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree. You know, his, his, verse chapter 30, uh, 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 Psalm 36, verse 8. You've gone too. You've gone too fast. So, so I'll read. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. Hallelujah. He gives you drink from the rivers of his pleasures. It could be a drink. Do you know that scripture says that uh, uh, wash me by water by the word. So the word of God could be water. The spirit of God could be water. There are so many things, but there are rivers that this mighty God gives to us to drink from. And it's called the rivers of his pleasures. They are not rivers of his punishment. They are not rivers of his shame. They are rivers of things that please him. When you drink of that river, you will please the Lord, my daughter. You will please him. And he will make you pleasant. And he will make you some, someone that people want to come around. Hallelujah. If you read Revelation 22, I just picked two verses. And, and if you read Revelation 22, the verse 1, we're talking about the river of life here. Revelation 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river. This Spiritual river that the Lord wants us to be planted by and to drink from. Because you are not a, a tree, but like a tree. A, a tree drinks with its roots. Is that not so? And you must drink with your spirit from the rivers of his pleasure and the river of life. It's a river that gives life and there is a river that gives death. But we drink from the river of life so that we can live. Can someone say hallelujah? And we can flourish. Amen? And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Somebody say water of life. A river of water of life. Clear as crystal. Proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. There is a river proceeding from the throne of God. Where God is sitting with Jesus Christ on his right hand. And sometimes the accuser on the left trying to accuse you, but you drink of it. This river will transform your life. This river would, would transform your mind. This river will make sure that you are positioned where you're supposed to be positioned, where there are weaknesses in you. When this river picks up the nutrients of the grace and power of God, it comes into you and it straightens you out. This river can chase away sicknesses and diseases from your life. This river can remove confusion from your mind. This river can make you excel in your state. This. It can make you excellent also in your work, in your career. This river can make you serve in the church and it's like you don't, you don't get tired. And this river, if you do all this, what do you think is one word that this river will call? Will, something Christians love. The river of life. The river that flows like crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb shall do what shall bring what to us the be word. The ble, 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 ble. blessings. Who doesn't love blessings here? But some of us want to be blessed for doing nothing. You want to be satisfied. You, you want your quench thirst. Uh, 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 quench, you want your thirst quenched without drinking. How does it happen? You want, you want to be full of food, the bread of life. And you want to be full of it without eating it. Is that possible? Hallelujah. So please, let, let's relax in the presence of God today. It looks like I'm going too fast. Is, that all, so? Is it getting too hot out there? Okay, praise God. I believe what we have just considered is enlightening. And encouraging enough. As we progress, I will suggest some other obvious benefits from meditating in the word of God. We're talking about the river. If you don't meditate in the word of God, you won't get that river of life that is in it. Although you must be planted from it. You are plant, planted beside it so that you draw from it. 
is a spiritual life, a spiritual walk. And therefore, we need spiritual waters, spiritual rivers. Is that, do you agree, agree with that? And we need to be planted by it. Because scripture has likened the man, his estate, his home, his church, wherever he is, to be like something that must be positioned near rivers of pleasure. So don't stay away. May your, your quest be that let me find these rivers, this water, and may I position myself by it. If I go into it and I will not drown, then God put me in it, put me in it. Hallelujah. So let's look at some four benefits of meditation from the Psalm 1 verse 3 that we looked at. But I will still read it from the verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I don't want to belabor this point, but let me explain. You see how the Bible is saying the person is walking in the counsel of the ungodly. And as if that wasn't enough, now something caught the attention and he stood. And he kept standing there, soaking it in. Not quite long. It took over him and then he sat down. I'm going nowhere. I love this world. I want to remain in this world. I love this condition. I love this sin. I love this drug. I love this alcohol. I love this foolishness. I love, you, you understand, he sat down. First he was walking on in the Christian. It could happen to a Christian. Walking the Christian walk. Then something caught his attention. And then all of a sudden he stood. And some standing, uh, you, you, have you seen somebody flabbergasted and opened them up? And then, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the guy, the ungodly, <laughs> he won <laughs> the counsel of the ungodly, took it in. He didn't say, I rebuke you. He didn't say, this is not God's word. He took it in. Very soon, it stops him. The acts of it stops him, and then not quite long, he's sitting down. It is said that the seat of the scornful is the closest it gets to hell. Somebody repeat this after me. The seat of the scornful is the closest it gets to hell. When you were walking, just in the, the council of the ungodly, you were a little far away. There was hope. And then you now stand in, 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 you stand in the path of sinners. All your friends are bad people. Why, why, why can't you can't change them? Then leave them. Please, their influence over your life is wrong. You can't change them. You okay, yeah, you know I have to evangelize to them. They are rather evangelizing you. <laughs> they are evangelizing you for the devil. You, 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 you see it? And then now you sat down. And this scornful, this con God, mock God. All their jokes are against your Jesus Christ. They have nothing good to say about your faith, but you call them your friends. And that's the people you go to. That's the people you live with. Yes, you can find them in your workplace because the work doesn't belong to you. But if they come into your house and, and with all respect, talk nonsense there and you can't tell them to stop the nonsense and leave. Then I, I, my nephew, I don't know what is wrong. You understand? So this is what the Bible is saying. So if this, you don't do any of this, and you are on your feet, hallelujah. And then you say, but your delight, you don't delight in the counsel of the ungodly, you don't delight in the, in, in, in the path of sinners, you don't delight in the things that happen in the seat of the scope, but you delight in the law of the Lord, the word of God. And in that word, in that law, you meditate day and night. It's your lifestyle. If you have not tuned the food and swallowed it for it to supply the vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F to you. Do you know that you, you have wasted the food? So he said, I don't waste the word of God. Somebody said, God, bring me to the place where I won't waste your word. Lord, bring me to the place where I will not waste your word. I will meditate. I will, uh, uh, what's the word? Masticulate it or something like that. Is that not... What is the word? 
Okay, ask your mother. Test your mother and ask, ask her for me. You know, you, you, you chew it and swallow it. It's masticulate. Eh? Ah, I got it right. Can you give me 90%? Okay. You, you understand? And, and then you, it goes in. And, and this is painting a picture of a ruminant tummy, a stomach. When you see that the sheep will be lying down, and the last time they went to graze was about a day ago, but they will still be chewing. Because God has given them two chambers. May you receive even more than two chambers. So that the word is somewhere, and occasionally he pulls it out and he chews on it. Have you, what, how much of the word have you stored in your spiritual tummy? That you get to a place, you have been sent to Saudi Arabia and you can't hold the Bible. How are you going to chew on the word of God? Ah, somebody's breathing very hard. I like that one. So this is the attitude for you to store the word. Somebody say store the word. The storage of the word is the storage of power. The storage of the word is the storage of life. The storage of the word is the storage of that which brings blessings. You understand? And everyone here wants to be blessed. But we don't want the thing that brings the blessing. So verse 2, you delight. Somebody say delight. What is another word for delight? What? Yeah, say it. Delight. Love. Even say love. Somebody say love. Okay, look straight into somebody's eyes and say, you must love the word of God. Hallelujah. The food you love, do you just look at it or you eat it? You love the word. Your love is in the word of the Lord. And you, because you love it, what do you do next? Meditate in it day and night. And then you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Are you getting how I'm painting it? You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It's actually not river. So river here, river here. Whichever your root goes, it gets water. Hallelujah. There are some soils, they are so loaded with nutrients. But because of the lack of water, the trees cannot pull the nutrients because it's the water that dissolves. Hallelujah. There's so much the Lord has put in you, but you need the word of God to go into you to dissolve it. Hallelujah. I know that when you can, some people would swallow pills, tablets, without water. But why do we take tablets with water? So that it can dissolve. And relieve. Uh, Papa Ness, is that not so? Praise God. My nephew says, yes, sir. So I'm not, I'm speaking the truth. And then you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Number one, tree planted by the rivers of water. Number two, that, a tree, that tree will bring forth its fruit in its season. Let me say something to you here. Let's say you are, we are all orange trees. And there is a season for orange. There is a time that human beings have decided to eat oranges. So let's say it's February. And then we bear the orange in March. Will we make good sales? No. Because it's not in our season. There are things that God has, has purpose for you to get when you are a child. Things that when you are a teenager. Things that you, when you are a youth. Things that when you are an adult or young adult. Things that it, it comes to you when you are an adult. May none of you miss your season. Sometimes we divide it into singles when you are single and when you marry. I want to tell you there's so much blessings in singlehood. And when the time comes for you to transit, for, for you to be translated, for you to be conveyed, for you to be transformed into the marriage distance, don't love singlehood. Because you stop, you, you stop enjoying the blessings of singlehood. Because God knows that now I expect you to be in the territory of. So there is something I was taught by one of my earlier mentors. He says that, yeah, do you know there are things you can do best when you are single. And there are things you can do best when you are, not, you are married. So when you are single, don't do things that married people should do. And when you are married, don't behave like you are single. Oh, come on, somebody. I like that amen. Can I hear more amen on that? 
You understand? We are not pushing anyone to marry. No. Because there are some people, they have grace to remain single. If that's what God has given you, please remain single. If not, please, let the transition be smooth. Somebody say smooth. But there's no age for anybody to marry. I was in a church. And not knowing my previous, the previous pastor had also said something over the church. That no matter your age, if you want to marry, you'll marry. So I don't know. I also went and reiterated the same thing. And one lady, she will be 60 something, caught it. The sort of wedding she had, I've never seen a wedding like that before. No one's time is over. No one's time is over. And, and if, if it is not your desire, don't, like I said on Sunday, don't wait and think, oh yeah, when I marry, I'll be happy. No, then you'll be the most miserable person. Human beings to make you happy. A Joe broke crazy head like mine to make you happy. It will never happen. Hallelujah. Let me give you a story. That's this, my Chinese pastor. I say, yeah, do you know there is this story? There was this man. And this man, he was, he said, yeah, marry. He said, I won't marry. No, no, it was a lady. Marry. I will, say, I will not marry. Okay. Now, he was waiting for the ideal man to marry him. He waited until he married an ordeal. Oh, come on. You didn't get the joke. <laughs> he couldn't get an ideal man, but an ordeal. <laughs> Don't overweight, but that is, that is by the side. Hallelujah. Praise God. Like, like our senior pastor wants to hold a session with the singles. Please, I don't want to see only young people here. It is, it is actually a sign of discipline to be single for a long time. You understand? Let everyone come. And, and, and let the adults come, even if, when, if they are married, so that they will hear and we can use that to counsel the singles amongst us. Hallelujah. Can I proceed? And he says that you shall bring forth your fruit in its season, not out of season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. There is a counterpart psalm to Psalm 1, the verse 3, that will help us to buttress the benefits we are going to consider. Psalm 92 from verse 12 to 15. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 15. Can you read this with me? Can you help me read? Let, let us, while you are sitting or you want to stand up, you can stand. But let's go in the name of Jesus. The righteous like a palm tree. Like the cedar in Lebanon. Uh-huh. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14. They shall still bear fruit in and they shall be fresh. Somebody said fresh and beautiful and succulent and flourishing. In the things of God, there's nothing like I'm 80 years. And so I'm dry bone. Who told you I'm dry bone? Hallelujah. They shall still bear fruit in what? And they shall be fresh and flourishing. Verse 15. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The righteous shall flourish. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. This is where the river flows. If you read Ezekiel, the water that leaves, it is at ankle level, it is at knee level, it is at waist level, it is at chest level. Now you cannot walk in, but you have to swim in it and go under it. This is the river. And if you are planted in God's house, you will flourish in his courts. So you are in the house. Nobody sees you, but when you flourish, everybody will see you. Sunday will look at the cycle. He just saves you and people think I should be saved. No, he takes you through sanctification, takes you through justification, and then he brings you to a place called glorification. Can I tell you one truth? You are not like me for this. I don't think any of us have come to that place of glorification yet. You better look for it. 
You better do the things that will bring us. We better do the things that will bring us to that place of glorification. Whatever you have achieved, I want to tell you, it pales in comparison to what God wants you to achieve. He will glorify you. Somebody say hallelujah. He wants to glorify you. Hallelujah. So let's look at the four benefits. First, you shall be like a tree planted. It is divine positioning. Somebody say divine positioning. It is not the positioning that man does, but God positioning you, God planting you. You shall be like a tree planted, hallelujah, by the rivers of water, not in dry places, not nest, but planted. It's your permanent place, hallelujah. From that place, you are going to flourish and go left and right. That's what Psalm 90, 90, 92, the 13 says. Those who are planted in the course of the Lord shall do what? Flourish in the, in, in, in the house of the Lord shall flourish in, in the courts of our God. Divine positioning. I know sometimes we want to position ourselves in a place. Even in this church, may God position you and not, not, don't let it be you. When he positions you, you will flourish. He knows the soil that you need. He knows the amount of water that you need. There are some plants, they need so much water. There are some plants, a little water is enough. And he is the husband man. And Jesus is the farmer. Allow, be a farm in the, in the, in the course of the Lord and may your farmer be Jesus. He says he will position you. Somebody lift your hand and say, yes, Lord. Lord. It's no man's position, but divine position. So this is the first blessing. In addition to renewing of our minds and the transformation of our lives, he will position you. And you see how this works in tandem with them. Hallelujah. Number two, divine fruitfulness. Somebody say divine fruitfulness. That brings forth its fruit in its season. In the verse 3, that statement, that brings forth its fruit in its season, speaks to divine fruitfulness. Whether the enemy likes it or not, you will bear fruit. Somebody say hallelujah. Because sometimes where we are planted, we think this is a dry place. I've enjoyed it so many times, especially in my previous career. I was sent to a particular place and said, hey! Yo, that place, no, 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 no. I, I say, okay, let me just go. Oh, Lord, it's, 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 it was my best. My best outing out there. Hallelujah. God was with me. Please, if God is with you, he will turn the deserts into forest. He will turn that dry place into well-watered lands. Hallelujah. Where people expect you to fail, you will succeed. You will shock them. You will bear fruit in your season. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, why is in Windsor? I will bear the fruit that I must bear in Windsor. Why is a student? I will bear fruit that I must bear as a student. Oh, 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 okay, okay, which one? What, what do you do in the church? Say, so why is then mention the, what you are doing in the church? And then you realize if you are not doing anything, you see, you, you, don't, you can't find anything to say. So somebody, let's go. Let, I will say, why is pastoring? I will bear the fruit that I must bear while pastoring. Who couldn't say anything? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Next time we say this, we must have something to say. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Please, your season will not be over. There are so many types of trees. I know that there are deciduous trees that shed their leaves uh, once a year, and then it comes, you, you understand. And then there are semi-deciduous trees that, that they, 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 share, they, they don't shed their leaves that often. And then there are perennial trees that their leaves are green always. If you are a child of God, what type of tree do you think God wants you to be? The last one, perennial. Your leaves your, 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 I mean, you shall bear your fruit in your season. Your, you, you shall be green and fresh. No weather, whether summer, winter, autumn, or whatever, fall, whichever part of the world you are, you shall be who you are. Hallelujah. We will see you happy today and sad tomorrow. Gloomy today and excited. No. Do you know the fruit some of us bear shall be what we say? The fruit you bear shall be the song you sing. The fruit you bear shall be maybe the relationships you are in. 
It's the fruit. That's what people see. But what is going on in you, nobody sees it. May that which is going on in you, that is from God, bear the fruit that people will see and bless your God and praise his holy name. You bear your fruit in your season. Come on, I thought someone would say hallelujah. And then the number three, divine health. Somebody say divine health. Whose leaf also shall not wither. A healthy plant, sometimes a sick plant, you see it from the leaf. Is that not so? It begins to swivel, it begins to become brown. It's instead of being green, it is yellow. And then some are falling when they sow. But you, would, you, would, you will have divine, your leaf shall not wither. Psalm 52 verse 8 says, but I am like what? A green olive tree in the house of God. God. You can't be a Christian who is part of a church like All Nations Full Gospel Churches International and have swiveling and, 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 and withering leaves. No. But you shall be like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the message of God forever and because of this Hallelujah. Come on, who says, yeah, I believe? believe. Somebody say it by faith, that I am. I am. Mention your name. I am. I am. Like a green olive tree. Planted in all nations, full gospel church, Windsor. If you are happy and you know heaven has said, to put your hand together and say hallelujah and Amen. Psalm 4, verses 20 to 23. This is what preachers and and, and, uh, 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 like like Derek Prince and others call this God's medicine. Hallelujah. How does the word you meditate in become medicine? Because there could be something that no medication can work. But this word, this word, word can give you that medicine. Let's read it. Say, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And if you do all these, they are life to those who find them. And health, not sickness and disease, to all their flesh. Oh, come on. I, I, I didn't hear an amen. Let's all read it together. And at the end, say amen if you believe. Let's go, my son. From the, my son. Let's go, my son. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life. Somebody go back and say, because they are life. Those who find them and health to all their flesh. Please, the word of God must be found. How can we find the word of God? Go back to the 20. By paying attention, giving attention to it. Inclining our ear to to the word. And not allowing them to depart from our eyes. You, you understand? And then, by so doing, it goes deep into where? Your heart. And immediately it's in your heart. That is the center of life. That is the center that controls everything of your being. It begins to send healing and wellness and wholeness to every part of your being. And he says, all, find, those who find them is health to all their what? Flesh. And it is life to them. From the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet, no sickness and disease can survive this medication of God. Come on, somebody. I thought you put your hand together. No sickness or disease can survive any, this medication of God. If you believe it, it will work for you. If you don't believe it, it might not work. But this morning, uh, Bishop, Bishop Rosie told us, faith. It's faith, though. If you believe it, so, you, you, you understand. Can you, divide, uh, can you identify the art of meditation from this scripture? Which part of it? Who can tell me? 
The beginning. Kobe, come and tell me the part. So take us to the beginning, verse 20. Which part is the meditation side? Kobe, come, 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 come. You won't die. Come, you come and sing here and then come and preach with me. You don't want to come. Please, let's do it. We don't have time. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody put your hand for brother the corpse. Hey, hallelujah. Because we want to identify the mechanism and the process. Come, come to the middle. Let them catch you in the camera of meditation here. Which part? So describe it to us. So the first part says give attention. That means focus on it. That's right. And then um, always uh, do not let it depart from your eyes. Which also no, so for the second one. Okay. Please don't go. Wait for him to go. He's in verse 20. Don't go to 20. Yes. Verse, uh, so the first part is um, giving your attention to it. Which is focusing on it. Uh-huh. And then inclining your ears. Somebody, when is that attention? Do this. And then incline your ear. Hold your ears. Uh-huh. Let your ear hear the word every day and desire it. You understand? Uh huh. And then what again? Yes. And then um, the next verse. Depart from your eyes. It means you should always have your, your focus, focus on the word. Yes. And uh, the last part is always saying it to yourself, repeating it, and keeping it in your heart. Yeah. Praise God. Come on, put your hand together. <laughs> so you understand the word. Let's go to the twenty. Somebody hear me and hear what the spirit of the word that you give attention to. And the word that not just giving only your attention to it, but you also incline your ear to. The word that you know it's like a picture. Sometimes the way I used to explain this is that, who, why do you call this S and you don't call this S? Because somebody told you this is S and you kept the picture. When you see S, you know this is S. When you see A, you know this is A. When you see the word of God that addresses a particular situation, you know it. But sometimes we don't know it because we have not inclined our ear to it. We have not uh, 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 given it the attention it deserves. We have not inclined our ear to it. And then we have, we don't, we have not kept it in our eyes. You have, it's a, a, a pic, picture, piece, oh God, this English. It's a picture or something. That, that's the word. Of it, you have it. It's an imprint. It just remains with you. You sleep and you have it. You close your eyes and you, see, you open your eyes. You see it. You understand. You know there are some there are some things you see when your even your eyes are closed. There are things that you have kept in there. It's in your eyes, and then you keep it in the midst of your heart. It's so precious that don't allow anything to take it away from you. Don't allow any confusionists on social media to tell you this is not true. Because the man himself is a lie and he's preaching a lie. And then we don't allow you to keep it in the midst of your heart. The very center, the safest place in your heart. And then it becomes life to you. No death can conquer this. Even if you die your own death, you make it to eternity with God. And then it's health. Why is on this earth? It's health to you from the crown of your head, your head, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your uh, throat, your uh, chest, your, your, that thing here, what do you call it? Your lungs, uh, your so, so and so, small intestine, long intestine, your kidney, your liver. You understand? Everything through, if you are a man, your prostate, whatever it is, it, and all the way to your, li- your, your legs, your tibia, your fibula, your knee, your kneecap, your your ankle, your, 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 the bones in your foot, every part of you, every part. And I want me, God, has, that's what going, God is saying here, health to all, 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 not some, of your flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, hallelujah. hallelujah. And this is what God is saying. And then the last benefit here, divine prosperity. Whatever you do shall prosper. This is where some people have missed it. They say, oh, prosperity preachers. No, prosperity in, in the, is not just making money, but succeeding in everything you do. You begin something and you accomplish it. You have prospered in it. You came to school and you graduated and graduated very well. You have done what? prospered in it. You saw a lady and you were courting the lady and you were able to marry the lady and, and then even when, when, when you were able to get the lady to give you children, you have even prosperous <laughs> Hallelujah. You are a lady who kept yourself very well. I want to be good. First, nobody could see you but now you have about 10 men trying to propose to you. Yes, you are prospering. 
And then you decide that this one, I don't like the shoe. This one, he doesn't serve in the church. This one, I hear he doesn't tie it. I look, this one, I hear he is stingy. Please, anyone who doesn't tie it is stingy. Don't marry him. But you yourself begin to tie it. You, you too, you too. <laughs> you don't give offering and you want to marry the person. You know, sometimes when, when somebody wants to marry you from this church, the first question I'm going to ask the guy, uh, Uncle Dan, please give me his titan what? Record. Uh, this man in, 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 in Texas, uh, Hagee, he's, he, says that, he says that if you come to his office, and so you, somebody wants to come and see him. They quickly go through the records, whether it's somebody who is given to support the work. And he, he sees that you don't tie it. When he's praying for you, he will close his eyes. <laughs> because he doesn't know whether you steal something from his office. Because you are even you are able to steal from God. How much more him? So when he's praying for you, he will close his eyes. He will open his eyes like this. Look at you. Watch where your hand is and your leg is. <laughs> and pray for you. Because if you can steal from God, how much more him? There is this other guy who wrote a very good book on giving. One day I'll do a series on, in, from that book. I've forgotten the name. He also says, uh, if you want to marry any of his children, because he has girls, and you are, you are in the church, you have come to join the church, the first thing he checks is whether you give. If you are in good standing, then you will not abuse his daughter. You, you, you understand? Yeah, yeah. You love God so much that even your money that looks like it's not enough, you are able to obey him to bring your offering. He knows you are somebody God is going to bless, like the Nigerian would say, nyafu, nyafu. He knows that. There's potential for you. Then the next thing is he takes you to a room. He has a room where he has guns. So he will show you all his guns. Say, so you see this? Anytime you maltreat my daughter, one of this will come after you. <laughs> He said, I'm a man of God, but I will let you know how much I love my daughters. And every lady in this church, do you know you are all my daughters? Any man who will treat you, I don't know what will come after them. But something would definitely, something would definitely come after them. Hallelujah. You will prosper, divine prosperity, whatever you do. That is good. Will prosper. Let me just put that. That's my... My, my, I'm just adding that. Otherwise, you go and do bad things and you say, God, no, no, no. It's not bad. Whatever you do that is good will prosper. Psalm 92, 13 says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish, shall prosper in the, in the courts of the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I've said enough. I will continue this one day. Hallelujah. There are a few things I would, but I believe, what are the, 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 if you are planted by the rivers of water, that is divine what? Positioning. Uh-huh. And you shall do what? You bear what? In a season, divine fruitfulness. A good tree is known by its fruit. If you are a good Christian, you bear fruit that everyone will know that you are a good Christian. You understand? And you will bear fruit. Somebody say, I will bear fruit. In my season. And the next one, your leaves shall not wither. That's divine what? And divine health, we use that to study Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23. That to the meditation, that explains meditation. That is something you give what? Attention to. Incline your ear to. And then don't let it depart from your eyes. And then as you keep doing this, it sinks into your heart. And when it gets into your heart, if it doesn't do anything to you, at least it will give you life. And if it gives you life, it will also heal you from here to the soles of your feet. Every part of every sickness in your body. We don't have time, but I tell uncle, you come and let us pray a little. And then whatsoever you do shall prosper. Have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed today? Somebody put your hand together and let us bless the Lord. As uncle comes, hallelujah. Uncle wants to pray. And uncle, during the prayer, pray that people who want to prosper will also want God's, God's work to prosper. And therefore, and these things we do in this church, there are some we can do by prayer and there are some we can do with money. <laughs> hallelujah. And when we need the money, may we not go to the bank to borrow. They will not even give us the loan. It's only us who have come together. Are you, who is ready to prosper? 
who is ready to be divinely positioned, who is ready to be divinely fruitful. It is no man, the devil cannot come in to stop your fruitfulness. Who is ready to be divinely healthy, who is ready to prosper. Hallelujah. It's a prosperity that is appreciable. You can look at it. I was there and I'm now here and very soon I'm going to get there. Somebody say, there, here, here. over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rise up and uncle, let's pray. Yes. Let's stand. Let's stand. In the name of Jesus. I pray, 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 pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Personalize it in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I am a tree. In the name of Jesus, planted oh by the rivers of water. In the mighty name of Jesus, shere mama swaka seke teke re masoko kai ke akaswa kai ke kakoka swa kai seke teke re mama swa kai. You bear fruit. I will bear fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus, in His season. In the name of Jesus, I will not be limited by seasons. In the mighty name of Jesus, shekwa kaseke te maka kaka swa sheke te kere masoko kai maka kaka swa kaseke re mama swa kai ke kaka swa mere se te kere mama swa kai. I will not be limited by the seasons. In the name of Jesus, because I'll bear fruit. Ke kaka kaka swa sheke te kere mama swa kai ke kaka kaka swa mere mama swa kai. Everything I do. I will prosper in the name of Jesus. Declare, ke kakwa kaswa kaseke te kere maswa kai, mama swa kai. That everything you do, you will prosper in the name of Jesus. Personalize it, ke kakwa kaswa, shere ma se kere ma masoko kai, makakwa kaswa seke, makase kere seke seke te, makakwa kaswa kase kere ma maswa kai, ke kakwa kaswa kere ma masoko kai. Good health in the name of Jesus, divine health. Ke kakwa kaswa kaseke te kere mama soko kai. Maka kwa swa mere se te kere mama se te kere mama soko kai. Maka kwa kaswa sheke te kere mama soko kai. Maka kwa kaswa kaseke re mama. Maka kwa kaswa mere se te kere mama mama. Maka kwa kaswa kaseke te. Maka seke te. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. There is nothing compared to how you are holding us in your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, nothing compared to the blessings that you are blessing your children. Nothing compared to what you are doing to us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let somebody give it to God this day. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The word. We receive the word. And now it's time to give to God. Amen. We will not hold back from blessing God's work because he's first blessed us. Hallelujah. And then we have platforms that we can use to give. When you have cash or check and you are in person, you can write your check, put your money in the envelope. Even when you are online and you decide to give by check or cash, let the leaders know and then we will come for it. POS is at the back. You can use your credit card or your debit card. Or you can go online. Give through ye transfer, ye transfer to D Mensa at ANFGC.org. Or you can push pay. Push pay tests ANFGC Windsor to 77977. Follow the prompt. God loves a faithful giver. Amen. Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to be in your house. Meditating in the word of God, we've heard the word, we'll keep it hidden in our heart. Father, you have given us seed for us to sow in the soil that you have already prepared. Father, let our seed be sown and then there will be time 
for harvest. Who will harvest bountifully. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All praise be given unto him. All praise be given unto him. All praise be given on to him, be given on to him, be given on to him. All praise be given on to him, be given on to him, be given on to him. All praise, praise be given on to him. All praise, praise be given on to him. All praise. for the benediction the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you that perfect peace go in peace Amen hey, Jehovah Jehovah reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, you will lift it up above other gods, above other gods, above other gods, above other gods, you will lift it up above other gods. Above the God, you will lift it up. Above the God, above the God, Hallelujah. Heaven angels singing, they are singing, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, heaven angels singing, they are singing, hallelujah, oh, morning time, afternoon, in the evening, they are singing, Hallelujah. Morning time we say, Morning time, afternoon, in the evening, they are singing. Hallelujah. We give glory to the Lord, He reigns. We give glory to the Lord, He reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. Oh, we give glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he, oh, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns.